Hello and welcome. I'm Mohammed Abzal Shada, and this is my team from the University of Texas at Austin. Today, I'll talk about investigating groundwater flow dynamics using physics informed neural networks, or PINs. Let's first start with a short intro to groundwater flows. Groundwater flows are subsurface flows driven by hydraulic gradients. For example, look at this video where fluid is injected into this porous reservoir and it seeps through the reservoir and exits from this space called seepage phase and it becomes a loop. It's relevant because we can see it in daily life. For example, look at this uh, picture where uh, after a rainfall, the water has seeped out through land. This is an interesting problem because it can help us design better hill slopes as well as dams. So now let's keep this picture in mind and talk about modeling these groundwater flows. These groundwater flows are typically modeled as flows in unconfined aquifers, generally uh, vertically integrated versions of mass and sometimes momentum balances are used. The flow is considered incompressible and the porous medium is considered homogeneous, isotropic and isothermal. And if you look into this figure, uh, there are different variables. Let's go through them one by one. Small h is the free surface height, which is a function of space, x, and time. And the total height of reservoir is h, and the total length of the reservoir is l. And there is a seepage phase, which depends on time, uh, sf. And hl is the height of lake. There are several models which empirically uh, describe this seepage phase. But then there are other models which completely neglect the seepage phase. In this work, we'll use two physics-based models. One is the dupuy buzinesk approximation, and the other one is a recently, uh, recently proposed uh, model by Dinucci. dupuy buzinesk model is a conventional model. It is based on vertically integrated one-dimensional mass balance along with Darcy's law. It assumes a shallow water approximation uh, for which the aquifer has to be a high aspect ratio one. And as a result, uh, it neglects the flow in vertical direction. And it also neglects the seepage phase. Here, the governing equation for dupuy buzinesk model can be written like this, where you have mass balance, uh, which includes porosity and uh, the specific discharge or flow rate, uh, which is discharge per unit width uh, in the third dimension. Q can be defined by Darcy's law with hydraulic conductivity K. Now, a recently developed model by Dinucci uh, in 2018 assumes a vertically integrated two-dimensional mass balance, and it also uses Darcy's law and Cauchy's integral relation in between stream function and potential function. It considers vertical flow as well as seepage phase, and the governing equations take this form where the mass balance is the same as the Buzinist model, but the flux is now an implicit function due to this higher order vertical flow effects term shown in blue color. So now, if we want to compare these two model partial differential equations directly, or if we want to consider seepage phase in dupuy buzinesk model, we can use information from the data and experiments. And for that, we used this technique called physics-informed neural networks. I won't go into basics of neural networks, but I'll give you a flavor of pins using this neural network architecture diagram for unsteady dupuy model. For this case, uh, the input layers uh, are the space and time, and uh, the information goes into uh, this fully connected neural network, which spits out uh, the free surface pro profile function H, and using a tool from uh, a tool called automatic differentiation, we can find the partial derivatives with respect to the input layer, so del x over, over del x, and so on. And then we can make residuals for the partial differential equation, and as well as the left and right boundary condition. The beauty of pins lies in its loss function because it carries the physics information. These PDE residuals are then fed into the loss function along with some prefactors, say alpha for PDE and betas for the boundary condition. 
And this loss function is optimized using, uh, using Adam and LBFGS until it converges. To use pins, we need some training data. And in this work, we have used three sources of data. First is the analytical results for the steady state. Uh, then we have performed the experiments for the steady case. And lastly, we have done numerical simulations for the transient case. The experimental setup used in this work is quite simple. It has an acrylic cell, which is filled with beads the, uh, of size one and two millimeters. The water is pumped from right to left at a prescribed flux. And there is a camera, which is orthogonally placed, which captures the pictures. For the numerical simulations, we have used finite element based, uh, finite element method based solver called Phoenix. And the initial conditions for the numerical simulations are constant height, whereas the boundary conditions are fixed slope at the seepage phase and fixed head at the uh, far field boundary. And now let's talk about what happens for steady case. For steady case, the governing equation for, uh, take these forms because uh, Q becomes a constant across the domain. So we can divide everything out by Q and the governing equation becomes order one. And similarly for De Nucci equation, this, uh, we do the same thing. And here's a higher order uh, vertical flow effect term as well shown here in blue. The input layers in this case are X and Q and the output is the free surface profile HX. In this case, we have only used data and PDE misfit, but not boundary. So we are trying to learn for the boundary values. Now we have three objectives in mind. So first is given the flow rate, what is going to be the free surface profile uh, in, a, in the domain? Second is to invert for hydraulic conductivity K in training. Third is to compare the Dinucci and Dupuit model using the neural network, uh, using the neural network predictions and applying the automatic differentiation capabilities. So let's start first with the synthetic data for learning the flow profiles. So here uh, on the left, you see flow profiles uh, for a particular case of flow rate. Here, the black dots are the data, which is analytical data plus 5% Gaussian noise. And then black dashed line are the noiseless data or the actual predictions. The, then we have changed the PDE misfit regularization from alpha equals zero to 10 to the power four. And you can see that alpha equals zero is the plain neural network, and it has a lot of oscillations which are unphysical. But as we add more physics to the pins, we'll see that these oscillations die down and we see nice uh, converging results. But if the uh, regularization is increased uh, further, we found that the neural network completely disregards the data misfit as well as the data. And the results are way off. So we need to find a sweet spot for the regularization parameter. And for that, we use a figure called L curve shown here on the right. Uh, it has PDE misfit on the Y axis and data misfit on the X axis. And we are changing the regularization parameter from 10 to the power minus six alpha bar. It's a scaling, which we'll talk in a moment. And we change it and increase the value of the a PDE misfit regularization and see that the neural network starts to respect the physics from PDE even more. But at the same time, data misfit is increasing. And after a certain value, there is a sharp increase in the data misfit. So the optimal value is close to this elbow, which lies in the range of one to 10 alpha bar. Now let's talk about what this alpha bar is. Our data misfit is, uh, can be written like this where uh, we have NT number of training data points. HI is the neural network predictions. Uh, HI is the training data and HNN is the neural network predictions. These are of order X squared. But PDE misfit is of the order of one. And in order to equate these two terms, we have to multiply PDE misfit with a prefactor alpha bar, which is of order X squared. So uh, that is going to be a regularization parameter for the rest of the study. Now using this, let's talk about the second objective, which is inverting for hydraulic conductivity. Now you can again see the free surface profile for the two cases of flow rates. And uh, here the black points are again the data 
And these are the neural network predictions for different value of PD misfit regularization. And you can see very well that they overlap with each other quite nicely. And the value of recovered hydraulic conductivity comes out to be uh, these values, which are less than 0.5% error, which is quite nice. The last uh, objective was to compare Dupuit and Dinucci model. And for that, we first scaled the Dinucci model and we found a dimensionless parameter pi, which captures the vertical flow effects to the horizontal flow effects ratio and is given as two times flux divided by the divided by the hydraulic conductivity times length. For small value of pi, one might think that the vertical flow effects are negligible. And that is what we precisely see in this figure for pi equals 0.2. Uh, we have calculated the terms inside the domain using automatic differentiation capabilities. And we found that the first order Darcy's law term was dominating across the domain because of this small value of pi. But if you increase the value of pi to two, you'll see that these higher order vertical flow effect terms are now dominating inside the domain. And therefore, you cannot use Dupuit model in this particular case. Now let's do the same drill for the experimental data. Starting with learning the flow profiles, here you can see the flow profiles uh, on the left, which are for one millimeter, and on the right are uh, ones are for the two millimeter case. The top panel is training data and the bottom panel is test data. And I'm only showing the worst performing results. We tested it on 26 data sets and these are the worst performing results uh, that we found. And here, black dots are the data and the solid black line is the Dupuy model where we inverted for uh, hydraulic conductivity simultaneously. And the blue lines uh, are the uh, case with Dinucci pins predictions in where we also predicted for K simultaneously. And the dashed lines are the values of Dupuit and Dinucci with fixed K. And uh, uh, the red line is the plane neural network. And in our problem, we found that for fixed K, we have calculated the value of K from posni karma relation plus uh, from the hydraulic conductivity relation. And uh, we found that there is still a uh, uh, there, there is a disagreement with the data, but the, uh, but the case for inverted K works fine for the training data. And for the test data, plain neural network go per cert and it has severe oscillations. And moreover, for the fixed K, both Dupuy and Dinucci work very bad. However, for the inverted K, we see very nice predictions. Now let's take a step uh, forward uh, and find out the values of K in inversion. And here we found that uh, we found values which are little off from their theoretical estimates. And we can say that these values are, uh, the values we predicted are much closer to the actual values because theory is idealized and experiments may have some errors as well. So uh, now we can talk about comparing the terms of Dinucci model in order to compare Dupuit versus Dinucci. In our experiments, uh, it turns out that the pi values are of the order of 10 to the power minus four to 10 to the power minus two, which means that the horizontal flow effects are supposed to dominate. And that is precisely what we saw. The Darcy's uh, law term was able to capture the whole physics inside the domain. Now let's take a next step and talk about transient results, starting with transient Dupuit case. For the Dupuit model, we have uh, here uh, the free surface profile with time and black dash line is a numerical result. And in numerical result, we added 5% noise and then predicted by uh, jointly, uh, pre, uh, jointly inverting for or optimizing for K as well as the boundary condition at the seepage phase. And also we had a dumb neural network also predicting the same thing. And, and as you can see that they all agree well with each other and the values of hydraulic conductivity are quite close, but there is, and, and, the, and so are the uh, boundary condition values. And here there is almost a 25% error in K. This uh, error can be reduced if we do not do a joint prediction and we only predict for K. 
and which is what we precisely saw for Dinucci case, where we predicted uh, by adding 10% noise, and you can see that all the profiles agree well with each other, and the value recovered for K was less uh, than 1% error. And with that, I'd like to conclude my presentation. In this work, we studied steady uh, analytical and experimental results, uh, and it helped us uh, show that all terms in the loss function are of same order. The physics information in the PDE is important and can't be discarded. And hydraulic conductivity was recovered with good accuracy. The characteristic scale is what we found, and it's the ratio of vertical to horizontal flow. Higher order effects are significant when pi value is large. For the transient simulations, we found that PIN's predicted profile uh, matches very well with the data. And we jointly predicted uh, model parameter K and left Neumann boundary condition values with good accuracy for DuPuit model. For Dinucci model, we found uh, hydraulic conductivity with less than 1% error. And the inverted parameters are not susceptible to noise. So with that, I'd like to thank you all for listening. If you are interested in checking out our work, the paper is going to be submitted very soon and you can find out the codes on this GitHub repository. Thank you very much for listening. I hope you have a great day.